All right, back in Simeo. Um, what I'm going to show you today is how to trigger processes through different uh, places within your model. So let's just create a process um, and I'll call this process. Um, track stat. This will track some sort of statistic within my model. It's going to have an assign step. Um, let's just add like a decide block and um, uh, why not add in like another little tally block here? Let's see if this will function. Come on. There we go. And that'll be my logic, right? Uh, ideally, you know, I would set this up for some purpose and I'd have uh, all of my fields filled out, but this is just kind of like a dummy process uh, that has some advanced logic in here. Okay, track stat. So track stat, I want this to occur after an entity has finished processing. How can I do that? Well, there's two ways to, to do that specifically. One of them is, so if I go back to my facility view, this is that simple fast food example. Here, if I click on the server block and I scroll down on the right hand side, add on process triggers. After processing, I can select track stat and have it triggered there. That's too easy, right? It says, hey, you know, uh, at the server block, add on process trigger after this process is, I want you to execute this logic. OK, that's nice. But what if I wanted to trigger multiple pieces of logic? According to certain events, each one of these after processing at fast food, that's an event. So I can actually just reference that event inside the processes tab. So I'm going to reset this so that it does not trigger via this view. Let's go back to the processes tab. OK. Now, so you see where I'm selected here. If I select a block, this background turns white. If I select the white space, uh, it goes in kind of this hash lines. And now I'm actually talking about the process in general. Triggering event name. OK. Whoa, there's a lot of events here. There's built in events in Simeo based upon the different objects that I have in the model. So let's say um, fast food because this is where it is, dot process, dot end, no, um, hmm, you know, output at fast food dot entered, output at fast food dot entered. What event is that? That is actually when the event that is triggered by somebody entering this node output at fast food. So I'm actually able to assign this to trigger any time that an entity enters the node output at fast food. So now if I go to this and I click this uh, this diamond here for the for the node output at fast food and scroll down to add on process triggers, it has this built in uh, event right here entered that I could assign the logic to, but I could also do it behind the scenes here. So some of them are built in um, events that you can reference. You could also set up some conditions. So for example, like if I wanted to use something like uh, model entity dot entity type uh, is equivalent to um, online, uh, like let's call it customer, right? If it is a customer, then I want it to trigger. If it's not a customer, then I don't want it to trigger. You could also use the logic is, is dot customer, right? Um, and that could uh, change how this event actually does trigger. Um, otherwise, if this is reset, so if I uh, right click this and click reset, if it's reset, this will trigger no matter what, as long as an entity enters the output at fast food node. Okay, what if we wanted to trigger an event to happen uh, once a day or once every week, for example. How might we do that? Let's create a process. And I'll call this process. Uh, daily process. OK, call the daily process and let's say every day I want to keep track of some variables, so I do an assign block. How do I trigger this to happen once every day with inside the simulation? We're going to use a an element called a timer. 
So let's go to the definitions tab, the elements and timer. So a timer is used to fire a stream of events according to a specified interval type. OK, click timer one. Let's change the name under general to be uh, 24 hours. Is it going to let me do this? Yeah, it's going to let me do that. OK, uh, naming convention would say I should, probably should not have my variable or something named uh, starting with a number, but I'm going to do it anyways if Simeon will let me. OK, 24 hours. What is this saying? What is the interval type? The interval uh, type is time and the time interval is every one. I could change the unit to days or I could change the uh, unit back to hours and say every 24 hours. What this means is every 24 hours in simulation time, there will be an event that is triggered. This occurs at the beginning of the simulation. There is no offset right now. So what is what would happen is this event would trigger right away as soon as the simulation started and then every 24 hours afterwards. OK, how is this useful? We have this timer called 24 hours. OK, it triggers an event. Let's use that in our processes tab. So daily process triggering event name. If I do the drop down here, hey, this thing popped to the top 24 hours dot event. So now what this is saying is this little lightning bolt says, hey, there's a triggering event every 24 hours or according to this timer event, this logic will execute. I also have the ability to um, in the definitions tab, if I wanted to create a different timer, I could say, well, um, I don't want this to occur until uh, 12 hours into the simulation, but then every uh, six hours after that, I want there to be an event and that could be like a shift change, for example, or you could say uh, every uh, seven days, I want there to be uh, an event triggered and I could call it whatever I want. But this is a very powerful way to trigger additional logic in our processes tab based upon events, either events that are built in like this entering the output node or a timer event. And then the uh, most rudimentary way would be inside the facility view. You could click on any of these blocks or the nodes and use add on process triggers and assign a process here. Well, I hope you found that useful. Uh, happy modeling.